Hey guys, uh, we're going to start the live stream here in a second, or at least the work part of it. I want to confirm that our audio is coming through. You guys can see me. Um, hopefully all that stuff's going to work. And then we'll get started. Um, a little background, this vehicle is my own vehicle. Uh, Valerie drove it for a while until we got her a Highlander. And the head gasket went bad a couple years ago. We really haven't driven it much since. Um, it's time to get it fixed. I've been putting it off for too long already. So the symptoms are misfire on startup, smokes, white smoke out the tailpipe for about 30 seconds, and then it clears up. It uses about a half a gallon of coolant every tank of gas, so 200 miles. Um, I want to get it fixed. There's a few other things we've got to do to get it going so we can take it up in the hills this year. Um, I already have other four-wheel drive vehicles, but this one's a little easier to drive and haul the dog and all of our stuff in. Um, we got confirmation of audio and stuff. Okay. So I want to cover a few things. Today we're just going to remove the cylinder heads. Hopefully I can get them machined tomorrow and then either sometime tomorrow or on Sunday we'll do a live stream and put it back together. The assembly process is going to be a lot longer than the disassembly process because I'm going to cover how to adjust the valves. Um, which is kind of a difficult task on this vehicle because it has um, buckets and shims. So we'll be covering that. Um, really just have to get this one just ripped apart tonight. I don't think I've covered this in the past. If I have, cover it again. This is what I use for my bolt bins. So this is just an antifreeze jug with the side cut out. Um, what I often do is I'll keep one or two of these up under the engine bay. If I take anything apart underneath the vehicle, um, like if I'm doing an engine job, everything from underneath the vehicle, I put in a separate one. Everything from up top, I put in a separate one. And then once I get down to the actual heads and I'm taking off bearing caps, um, stuff like that, I'll use a separate one for all the head bolts. The oily stuff goes in a separate one as well. If there's no questions so far, then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I know some of you guys like the, the point of view. So I have my GoPro with the headband set up. We'll get that going. Um, if you get <laughs> nauseous, sorry. We also have a under hood camera that we are gonna cover up, uh, cover some of the other stuff with. And I think you can probably see most of the stuff on the under hood camera. Um, so. Point it at me. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that or not. If, if the point of view doesn't seem to be working, then we'll switch to just purely the overhead camera. Okay. Any questions? No. No? <laughs> not yet. Uh, audio sounds good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think I saw Brian and George in there and Pico was in there. So we have a, a few people joining us so far. I'm sure there'll be more. Mm -hmm. There's Brian, Craig, George, Daryl, Pico's in here, and Antegas. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar with this engine, Toyota had a recall on it for the head gasket issue back in the mid 90s. They had the same issue for the three liter back in the early 90s. And on those engines, they replaced a lot of the blocks because of pitting. Um, the first thing I want to do is, it's going to be hard to see, but down underneath, I'm going to try and crack open the coolant bleeder or the drain, just so we can start draining the coolant out. You won't be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm hoping this radiator. Huh. I switched to the head cam because I thought you were going to be looking down and not no. at me. <laughs> no, we're looking at you. <laughs> this radiator may not have a bleeder, so we'll probably just have to pull the hose off. It is an aftermarket radiator. The vehicle has been wrecked. It doesn't look, it doesn't get good coolant mileage. It doesn't get good coolant mileage. <laughs> no, <sorry>. not good <laughs> coolant mileage. Not very good. Yeah. So I'm just going to put a bucket underneath there. Later on, I'll just, I'm just going to pull the bolts out of the thermostat housing. There's just three of them there. Um, we'll be able to dump all the coolant that way. I will have a little bit of leakage before then when we pull this upper 
radiator hose off, which this upper radiator hose doesn't look very good, so I'm gonna have to get a replacement. Um, I think it's a little too short. It seems a little stretched. So we'll have to get a replacement for that. And bear with me if I'm giving y'all the wrong point of view. Chad has <laughs> one, two, three, four cameras set up for me. Okay, I think, yeah, we'll see. We might be able to just switch to the overhead. I think that might cover us pretty good. And I'll probably have you turn my volume down a little bit as I run the power tools. Um, just so we're not blasting your eardrums out if you're listening at home. Are you ready to use it? Uh, one sec. So we're gonna pull the upper intake manifold off first. Um, this air intake tube, I, I pulled the whole air filter housing off. Um, radiator hose, fan shroud, lower plenum. And then once we get some of this other stuff out of the way, we can work on the lower uh, intake manifold, valve covers, and eventually the cylinder heads. You got your five foot drain bucket ready? Cause you're bound to miss it somewhere. <laughs> no, it's just a regular drain pan. <clears throat> okay, my uh, air cleaner housing is missing the one mounting bolt because it was wrecked and I haven't bought a new air box. But one down there, one over here. Now I pull this air box off of here for all kinds of repairs. If I, even if I'm just doing a timing belt, I typically pull the air cleaner housing out of the way. It just gives me a little more room and it only takes a few seconds to pull off. We'll unplug the mass airflow. We'll leave all of that stuff on the air box. There's a few vacuum hoses. Now, if you are doing this for the first time, you may want to mark your vacuum hoses. I've done a lot of these, so I don't mark them. We got one clip here. This one's broken, if you can see that. One clip here. A lot of these Toyota clips, if you take a 10 millimeter socket, you can normally get to the back side, and it's just the right size to depress the two retaining tabs and undo the clip. I think we're all un unbolted there. You know what would be nice? Huh. If there was a way that I could zoom in from my control station. Um, and you know, that may, that, that makes sense on why, uh, why the GoPro was zoomed in when I first plugged everything in. Hmm. There's a cruise control cable here. I unbolt the, the bracket from the throttle body instead of undoing the cable. Um, you have to kind of open up the throttle body a little bit to get to the one bolt. And then take the other one loose. And then all of this stuff is just gonna get thrown into one bucket. I guess we can take this out of the way too. And I'll end up just having a giant pile of parts. Um, <laughs> I don't really mark anything or keep it organized and separated. Val asking for more technology. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I may not, you know, follow the exact order. I jump around a little bit as well, but unplugging these ignition coils. Uh, we could probably leave the plug wire on after I just spent the time to unplug that, but unplug ignition coils. We have a idle air control motor underneath the throttle body here. That throttle body is very dirty. Now, most of these cables are just going to have a little ball on the end or cylinder. Um, it's easier if you open the throttle body before releasing it, at least this one. The next one is the automatic transmission kickdown cable. If you have a newer Forerunner or a manual transmission, then it won't have that. The newer ones are electronic. And then this one here is our throttle cable, which my throttle cable probably needs to be replaced. It's getting kind of stiff, but I don't have one here, so we'll just make two. And these ones I'll actually undo from the, uh, the bracket and leave the bracket on the intake. So there's going to be two nuts, one on each side of the bracket. It doesn't matter which one you take loose. You just have to loosen it up a little bit. It'll slide out the top. Okay. 
move that out of the way. Now, I do have the battery hooked up still. Um, if you don't feel comfortable working on them with the battery hooked up, go ahead and remove the negative cable now. That's what the service manual says to do, but I don't always follow that. Plus, then I would have to reset my radio, and I wouldn't want to do that. Does the radio in this work? Yeah. Oh, I thought that's why we had that fancy, uh, that dog radio in there. Oh, the Sirius? Yeah. <laughs> well, when I say the radio works, I mean it has Bluetooth and connects to my phone. Ah. And I listen to Pandora. Yeah. Oh, that we have radio. A <laughs> few vacuum hoses. Valerie hates my Pandora. Vacuum hoses over here, the crankcase ventilation hose, and they come around and they're already going to be attached to stuff we're unhooking. We're going to lift that stuff off with it so we don't have to undo everything. Um, throttle position sensor on the back of the throttle body. I'm going to unhook that. And actually, we'll undo just this one line from the vacuum line from the throttle body. We'll leave these on the pipe. And I normally take the throttle body off of the intake and lay it off to the side because it's easier to get to the hoses underneath after you remove it. Are you using a loud one or no? Yeah, it won't be real loud. So these are going to be four 12 millimeter headed um, fasteners. There's going to be two nuts and two bolts. And if everything is original, it's going to have a reusable metal gasket on the throttle body. If it's a supercharged version or has a dealer installed supercharger, then it's probably going to have a paper gasket. And I don't know if this will come all the way off or if we have to pull the upper plenum first. Yeah, we'll just leave that loose there. The upper plenum is going to be a bunch of 12 millimeter headed bolts and nuts on this side. And there's two long ones right in the middle. Noisy one? Uh, it may not be too bad. If, it's, if it gets too loud, then let me know. Is that loud? You're shooting it into the red. Yeah, you can turn it down. Yep. I know some of you guys listen to us in headphones, so it sounds like we're right there whispering into your ear. I've just been promoted to audio engineer. <laughs> this is a great day. <laughs> And you didn't even go to school for it? Is this what you went to school for? To move this one button right here? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I just unhooked this hose from right here behind the throttle body. That goes to the PCV valve. Now these are normally very brittle, so try to be careful with it. And sometimes there'll be a piece of foam over this fitting. You just slide that piece of foam out of the way and you can slide that down. We'll lift this off of the studs. Stupid question. Yeah. The foam doesn't melt? Like foam foam? No, it doesn't melt. Like styrofoam? Um, sort of like styrofoam. Chad gets about a thousand of these questions a day from me. <laughs> He's so patient. Okay, now that this is loose, I'm going to slide this off of the throttle body and set this piece aside. Six cameras, eight lights, three monitors, three mics, 60, 62 feet of cables. Val says we need more. <laughs> I would like to get a drone going in these live streams. You know, I, I actually sent an email to uh, Black, Black Magic Design asking them for specs on their one of their capture cards. <laughs> What's that? So, Sorry. <laughs> so we might be, you know, able to do more cameras at once. You know what we need? I saw it once on, like, behind the scenes of Godzilla. Uh -huh. No, no, it was... Godzilla? Which one's the big monkey? King Kong. King Kong. And the guy was like in this lift, like a cherry picker, and he was going up and down with the camera. <laughs> you need one of those? A boom? It's not necessary, or, but it would be cool. Or a jib? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pull the radiator hose off. That's going to make a mess. I got my coolant pan kind of under the middle of the engine. Hopefully we'll catch it. Oh, as a side note, I sprayed 
the exhaust bolts or the nuts with penetrating oil before we started just so they come off easier. There's going to be three on each side at the back of the engine that we have to remove. Uh, it's low on coolant, so nothing leaked out. So we're good to go still. <laughs> no big mess yet. Okay. Throttle body is going to have three hoses. One is a hose that goes down to a chamber around the injectors in case there's any fuel vapor that leaks. Um, it captures it. And just undo that. The other two hoses are coolant hoses, and there's going to have they're going to have spring clamps on them. So I'll grab some needle nose. And all of these hoses are original. I don't plan on replacing any of them, but as long as we can, you know, get them apart without breaking them. And that's why I unbolt the throttle body. It's a lot easier if you can manipulate the uh, position of the throttle body to get to those hoses. They're kind of a nightmare to try and unhook while it's attached to the intake manifold. Okay, we can see a little more of the underworkings of this engine. Um, next, we're gonna pull the upper air plenum off. There's gonna be one long bolt. These are all 12 millimeter headed as well. And then there'll be a nut on the front and the back, and then two more bolts. And then there's gonna be some other fasteners that we'll have to take off to, uh, that support this intake manifold. I'm gonna make some noise because I shut my cable in the drawer. <laughs> we need more cabling. <laughs> We got the three nuts and the, our bolts <laughs> and two nuts. Two nuts. Two nuts. <laughs> okay. Um, this wire loom bolts to the back of the intake. There's a 10 millimeter bolt back there. And I don't know what cylinder has the, uh, the failure on the head gasket. Um, maybe we'll be able to see once we have it apart. I haven't pulled spark plugs. I haven't done anything, but I know that it needs head gaskets. And if not, it's getting them anyways. <laughs> okay, um, diagnostic connector. This goes away in like 2002. So if you have one that's newer than that, it normally doesn't have that. Brake booster vacuum line. Even though there's a clamp on it, it normally slides right off. This bracket, the engine lifting bracket, has a 12 millimeter headed bolt that goes sideways through it into the intake. So I got to take that off. Ooh, we can see inside your cart. I switched you to the camera. See how messy it is? That's messy. Compared to some people's carts. Oh, well, for you, that's pretty <laughs> clean. <laughs> I like the the head point of view. Oh, it's someone's like been, we're right there with you. Right there with me. Uh huh. Someone's obviously had this off before because the 12 millimeter didn't fit. So, going for a 13. Now I bought this vehicle with a broken timing belt. Um, put a timing belt on it. These are non-interference engines, most generally. I've never seen one with a broken belt that actually bent the valves. So put a timing belt on it, water pump kit, um, and drove it probably 20,000 miles before the head gasket failed. Now there is a little more interference over here on the automatic just because there's a there's a heat shield on this lift bracket 
and the extra kick down cable that's in the way. Okay, hopefully that's loose there. Okay, there's a couple hidden ones. You probably won't be able to see me take them off. The fuel return line comes off the regulator back here and it mounts in two locations underneath this intake manifold. So those are going to be a 10 millimeter as well. And I'm not a dealer tech, but I have worked on lots of these engines. Um, we all drive Toyotas in my family. And I've had my engine in my other truck apart numerous times for various repairs and rebuilds. But don't get me wrong, most generally they are a reliable engine. Um, my other one is just a supercharged version that I'm always messing with it. It feels like I'm working on the vehicle while I'm watching this. <laughs> Oz. Well, you know, during this time, if you guys aren't at the shop working and getting your hands dirty all the time, I just wanted you to be able to feel like you're still working on a vehicle. Um, but this time you don't have to get your hands dirty. I suppose you could, you know, get your hands dirty first and then it'll feel more like you are working on it with me. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot ground cable, another 10 millimeter headed bolt. They're all sitting at home rubbing grease on their hands while they watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and this ground cable, whenever I reinstall this cable, I always rotate it up to the side 90 degrees to make the tune-ups easier to do in the future. Okay, next, this timing cover is kind of in our way. We'll have to take it off anyways um, to get the belt and all that stuff. So we'll just work on that next. We also have to take the belts off, the serpentine belts. We'll start, um, I normally loosen up the alternator first. We'll loosen up the power steering pump. The alternator, it'll be, you guys won't be able to see it real clear. On the bottom is the tensioner and it has a 12 millimeter head on the side that drives the tensioning bolt and then a 12 millimeter nut on the front. Um, I think it's a nut, it might be a bolt that locks everything down. So we'll loosen up that one first and then go in from the side and untension the alternator. Okay, so because it feels like I'm working on the vehicle, do I get a cut on the labor? Oz? <laughs> well, I'm working for free right now because it's my own vehicle. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> um, as I'm working on this, I notice that the fan blades are chipped as well. I'll have to see if I have another fan at home. Otherwise, this one's gonna go back on until I get a replacement. That was probably damaged in the accident. I know it was wrecked because the coolant bottle kind of messed up, the inner fender's missing, and there's some repair work on that side of the engine bay. Um, regular ratcheting wrench is what I normally use on the tensioning bolt. I took the last three days off. Nice time off, Brian. Well, if you get bored, um, you can come up to Colorado. We are currently working on our vineyard. <laughs> and we are, well, at least I am, I'm very unmotivated to work on it. Hey, I helped you work on it. Uh, well, I said I'm unmotivated. I didn't, I didn't want to talk for you if you were unmotivated. But I know that I'm unmotivated to work on it. <laughs> I'm unmotivated, but I'm also counting that as exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we get to hang out outside where we're not staring at the TV or playing video games. Yeah, we get to get goat heads together and stickers and splinters. It's romantic. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm more successful at growing goat heads than I am at grapes. <laughs> and the goat heads were a lot cheaper to plant. And they're very prolific. They just keep growing and spreading. Um, and they're really easy to harvest. You just walk. 
You just walk <laughs> or send, send the golden retriever. Okay, <laughs> this connector right here is normally fastened to the timing cover. This is for the cam shaft position sensor. Um, mine, the clip is obviously broken. I probably won't replace the clip. I'll probably just plug it back in and call it good. Um, there is a nut down here, 14 millimeter head. This is for the tensioner on the power steering pump. So we're just gonna loosen that for now. We'll have to take that nut all the way off later. And then I'm gonna loosen up the through bolt as well for the power steering pump. Never been to Colorado. Need <clears throat> to make my way up there, Brian. Now this next bolt, the tensioning bolt, is kind of difficult to get to. Um, it doesn't matter what you uh, really use to get on it. <clears throat> it's gonna be difficult. I normally go with a ratchet wrench. Well, anytime you come up to Colorado, Brian, we will try to uh, entertain you what we can. <laughs> Me and Valerie are not very entertaining people. You can come play video games with us in our living room. <laughs> yeah, why play remotely across the internet <laughs> when you could play in our very living room? But actually, well, we don't have visitors, so <laughs> we'll set you up at the shop. <laughs> And there's my golden retriever walking around, hanging out with us down at the shop, if you can see her. Looking for her deer leg? Yeah, we can see her. Yeah, we went and looked at a property of my uncle's and she found a deer leg somewhere from in the woods. And she's been, of course I let her keep it. She's been carrying it around like a trophy. No, mom let her keep it. You tried to throw it out of the car. <sighs> We, we play good cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> and she still likes you better. Okay, power steering belt. Um, I suppose that we should mark these since we're going to reuse them. I'm sure that everybody does that. Shut my cord in the toolbox again. So this is power steering. PS, <laughs> direction of rotation. We'll throw that aside. Uh, the next, before we can get the alternator belt off, the AC belt is at the very bottom. Um, I'll probably take it off from up top after I take the fan and the fan shroud off. Now that I have the other belts off, um, we can get this other stuff out of the way. If you don't have holding tools, it's best to loosen up these bolts with the well, at least one belt on, so it kind of puts some tension on it. But since I have a holding tool, I'll just use that. And there's going to be four nuts. Um, connecting this fan to the fan hub. That's not actually the water pump like on a domestic vehicle. That's just a bearing that the fan rides on. Linda wants to know if she can come over and play Animal Crossing. Um, yeah, me and Valerie don't play that one. No, I've never played that one. I always thought that was a little kid's game until I started seeing memes on Facebook. And that game can't be for kids. There's no way that game is for kids. I must not know what the game is. No, I've never heard of it until just recently when memes started coming out. Huh. Toyota 4Runner. I love those trucks. I'm going to mispronounce your name probably. Jugu? Banton? Jug Jugu? Jugu? I'm a fan of them. So this is a holding tool. It's got kind of a weird shape on there. We're going to put one of the nuts there. The other one's going to rest up against the holding tool. And that'll allow us to loosen up the other ones. One of them looks like it's rounded off already. So hopefully that'll come off. We might save that one for last. And you know, since I did a timing belt on this before, I probably knew that the fan was cracked and broken then. And it hasn't blown up in all these years. So we may just leave it. I mean, it's just my vehicle. Valerie doesn't drive it anymore. So if it blows up, then you just have another YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it still has sentimental value. Yeah, that one's rounded off. But I do hate driving this car. Feels like I'm driving a school bus. It took me a little bit to convince Valerie to start driving it. Would you go from the Passat to this? 
I think so. Yeah, the Passat to this one. So Valerie had a, I saw, well, you had the, 100, the Audi 100 CS Quattro. That was a while ago, though. Long time ago. It's like 30 years ago. <laughs> yes, I started driving. <laughs> I was a fetus. Because <laughs> I'm so young. <laughs> Okay, the almighty Nipix Cobras got that nut loose. So I'll probably replace that with a similar OE nut. I'm just going to set that one off to the side so I don't put it back on next time. Um, well, can we sneak this out of here? Or do I need to pull the fan shroud first? Yeah, we'll have to pull the fan shroud first. The fan shroud, I think mine has it. There is a lower piece of the fan shroud that comes off. Um, if you crawl underneath it, you can pull it off. If you know where the clips are, you can release it from up on top. Uh-oh. Mine has screws holding it in. Thank you, whoever did the body work on this one. So I'll just pull the fan shroud with the fan, and we won't have an issue. Got the motor in my Impreza flip car. Ooh. Dooley just sits now, lol. Brian. You got the motor in which one? In his Impreza flip car. Mm. Yeah, they're fun cars to drive. It gets a lot better gas mileage than the, well, you probably, in Texas, you might get 25 in that. We don't get that good in Colorado just because everything's mountains. Okay, 10 millimeter socket. We have two bolts on each side of the fan shroud. And if you didn't remove the airbox already, you're probably kicking yourself because it's a little harder to get to this side with the airbox installed. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. And the lower bolt was missing, so we don't have to worry about that. It's always nice when there's missing hardware and it speeds up the process a little bit. <laughs> Who needed that piece anyways? Is that your motto as a mechanic? <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't put all the hardware back in. Who needed that piece anyways? Okay. You want to switch to the overhead? Um, one second. Lumix overhead. So here's the lower piece that pops off. There's a clip on each side. You have to release it from the inside. And once you pull up on the clip to release it, then this will come off um, normally. There's also a lineup clip down at the bottom. And then mine is screwed together on this other side. So I can't pull it all the way apart, but that's the gist of it. Um, this other clip is sometimes attached to the transmission cooler hose, and mine is not attached there either. My skid plate's also missing. But it's a Toyota. <laughs> you, can, you can run it with half the parts. At least you're consistent. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Brett Thompson says, hey. Hey, how's it going? Well, I don't think Brett's been in a, in a live stream in a while. If it's the same person, <laughs> uh, Brett, let me know if you're the right Brett. Working at CarQuest still? He's been playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably at work. <laughs> I always see you on your cell phone at work. <laughs> okay. Now that more stuff's out of the way, we can get to the AC tensioner bolt. It's down at the bottom. We're going to take the 14 millimeter headed nut loose from the center of the tensioner pulley. I'm going to switch you back to your head cam. Yeah, that's fine. It's more exciting that way. So all the way down in here, there is, see if you can see that, center bolt on that pulley. Yep. Ooh, I made that tight last time. Because you're so strong. Didn't want it to <laughs> fall off. So I put half as many, many bolts in it as I should, so I have to tighten them twice as much <laughs> and then the other the tensioning bolt is on the bottom you guys probably can't hardly see what i'm doing but trust me it's there and it's we, a 14 millimeter head as well we could see until you tilted your head sideways well my arm isn't double jointed now we see it kind of 
25 to 26 miles per gallon vs 12 in the dually but people get out of the way in the dually get run over in the subaru brian <clears throat> yeah luckily our traffic isn't too bad here but <laughs> at least peter cottontail doesn't keep a naughty list greg peter cottontail hmm I don't know if that matches up with something you said or something in the chat. Or if that's Animal Crossing. Oh, maybe it's, we're not <laughs> Animal Crossing people. Okay, belt's loosened up a little bit. See if we can pop that off. Where'd my red marker go? AC, direction of rotation. We can take the, the alternator belt off. What happens if you put it on in the wrong direction? The world starts spinning the other direction. <laughs> um, honestly, I've never had an issue with it, but they say that it could squeak or fail prematurely because it's used to wearing in the same pattern. Oh. Or the world starts spinning in the wrong direction. The toilets don't flush right. Waves stop waving. <laughs> huh? I don't know. I was trying to say, like, the ocean, the waves stop, but I don't know what the verb for that is because a wave is a wave, but that is the verb. I've been inside all day. I'm going to let Chad finish working on so, his vehicle. Okay. <laughs> um, we can pull this upper cover off now. We can easily access all the bolts my socket I want. This is one of my favorite 10 millimeter sockets. It's the extra extra long 10 millimeter from Snap-on. So there's a bolt kind of behind this cam sensor connector. Matching one on the other side of the timing cover by the dipstick. We're going to take the dipstick tube loose. That's going to be for a later thing, but while we're here with the socket, we're going to take that loose. And then there's four bolts on the top of the timing cover. Now all of these bolts are shoulder bolts, so they'll have to go back in the same spot. If your Toyota is properly put together and all the wires are clipped in on top of the timing cover like that, Go ahead and pop them all loose now, or you can pop the clips off the timing cover and keep everything organized. But sometimes these clips break when you take them loose from the cover. And now we can see the top part of the timing belt. Everything still looks good. I don't see any fraying or cracking. Um, next is the fan bearing. Spin it, make sure there's no noise so we don't have to get a replacement. That sounds good. Um, two nuts and a bolt at the top. Sometimes the stud comes out, um, especially if you're in a rusty area, it probably will. Colorado's not even rusty and the bolt came out with the nut. The two nuts with the big washer on them go on the power steering tensioner bracket. One holds it to the engine, the other one is on the tensioner slide itself. And then we can kind of tilt this tensioner bracket off to the side and get it out of the way. And now you can see what I was working with on that tensioner. This bolt tightens and loosens it. This nut pinches everything down and holds it in place. One more nut, our bolt there. See how I got a running start on that one with the impact and it still didn't take it loose? <laughs> okay, take that off. We can set this aside. That is a common failure item. Um, they'll start making noise. So if yours is making any noise at all, I would replace it at this point. You want me to like duct tape that cord to your back? <laughs> is it getting annoying watching me? 
No, I oh. mean, I'm the only one that can see it from this point of view, but. Yeah, my cord keeps falling around, or falling off of me. Um, I think I'll be all right for now. We have guests. Coworker and his wife, and my dog. You guys want to say hi to all the YouTube people? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to get the plug wires and coils out of the way. So we have three ignition coils to take loose on this side, plug wires that come across to the other side. As long as you have a couple of the wires tied together, then you really don't have to do anything else to keep them in order. And that boot is stuck pretty good. Because that boot wants to stay in there. Oh, this is going to do the same thing. And that one. Okay. Well, normally the boot comes out with the coil, but not today. Plug wires don't break. Let's see here. Let's see if we can salvage all of them. If I have to order any parts for this, it probably won't get done this weekend because they're not doing as many uh, weekend deliveries for parts in my area um, with the virus going on. Okay, these coil boots. We may have to blow some air in there to, to get them to pop loose, but maybe we can just spin them, <laughs> get them to release. You just put your mouth on it and blow? <laughs> uh-huh. I used to use a straw, but straws are frowned upon now. You know, we don't want the straws going out into the ocean. Well, that's okay. We're in Colorado. We don't have an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They are awfully tight. Use your muscle. <laughs> I'm too weak. Too many video games. Okay, got two. One more to go. And this one must have been replaced because it's a different color. The other two were black and this one's gray. Did you really use a straw? No. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not a mechanic. I use the air hose and the compressor. I blow high pressure air into them. You could tell me absolutely anything <laughs> and I would believe you. Okay, now that I'm out of breath from taking those three boots off, lost my train of thought. You were about to get a straw. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we can either go two ways at this point. We could take the rest of the timing... Um, components off or we can take the valve covers off I'll say we'll do the timing stuff first um, we'll make sure that it's in time we'll take the belt off and then take the valve covers off that way we have less chance of stuff getting into the engine because um, it'll be apart for less time even though we're taking everything apart anyways and we'll have to clean it we'll work on this stuff first how long does this job take what does it pay no what's it how long does it take? <laughs> Are you wondering how long you're going to be sitting there? <laughs> no. Everybody in the comments is asking. Um, it's just me. <laughs> normally on disassembly, this will be a two to three hour job. Oh. Okay. Cody says hey. Huh? Cody says hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. We're going to use a special fancy tool that most people probably aren't gonna have unless they work on a lot of these. And even then they probably don't have it. Um, this is from SP Tools. I think that's Schley Products. Yep, it's a 64400. It is a big tool with two little studs on it. This will fit in the balancer so we can hold the engine still while we remove the crank pulley. You're making Keith dizzy. I'm making Keith dizzy? Which Keith? Yes. <laughs> 
both the Keiths. Watch, it won't fit on this engine. There we go. So there are two holes machined into the balancer where that fits. What's that thing do? It holds the engine still for me, or holds the balancer still. I'm gonna stick a breaker bar on it that goes over to the inner fender. And then... You got Schlade? Huh? You got Schlade? Schlade, yep. So 19 millimeter socket for the crank pulley. And I think this is probably one of the only ways that you can accurately torque the crank pulley um, is with a tool like that or actually some big pliers on the crank pulley, but you're going to chew it up pretty good. So Most people don't torque them. If you're doing this at home and you don't have that tool? Um, so the method that I normally use is using the starter <laughs> to crank the engine over and break the bolt loose that way. Hmm. Um, but it's kind of dangerous and if you don't have it set up right um, you can hurt yourself or hurt the engine so i did not demonstrate that one of the reasons i bought the tool <laughs> looks dirty see y'all later <laughs> is that keith yeah <laughs> Yeah, it looks like there was some Loctite on the crank pulley. I don't know if I did that or if it's there from previous. It doesn't look real fresh. Um, as you notice, I'm leaving the radiator installed in the vehicle, so we're, I'm being careful not to dent it in. Um, I would normally pull it, but the bolts come in from the front. So to easily access me, you have to pull the grill and the bumper. I normally can fit a long extension with the wobbly in there, but they put screws in the bottom holes instead of bolts. So I'm just gonna leave it in place. Um, unless I actually have to pull it out to replace it, we'll not touch it. I was wondering if you had a on the car bearing press, LOL, Brett. On the car bearing press? I said, well, I said rope down the spark plugs hole to hold the engine from turning, Craig. I, that would work. My luck, I'd probably punch a, a hole through something. Um, and my balancer is kind of stuck on there, so I'm going to have to get a puller, I think. Normally, I can just wiggle them, and they'll break free. But I may have to de-camera myself and go grab a puller. You may grab something. Uh, you'll have a hard time finding it. <laughs> you'll spend more time describing what it looks like. Yeah. One plug hole, Craig. Well, that's an interesting viewpoint. I'm going to put you on the main little mix. <clears throat> PJ says, what's up? Who? PJ. Hey, PJ, what's going on? Oh, camera died. No. <laughs> Did it? Or is oh. it still going? I don't know. You just said one sec. No, my power okay alive. my power cable came unplugged wheel bearing for an explorer brent oh yeah i remember that one <laughs> what happened on that one R refresh my memory um, one that he worked on main mix because you're looking at me <laughs> one uh Whatever one brett worked on and i had to go over car quest and oh. press a bearing on the vehicle oh Okay. You back on GoPro? No, sorry. <laughs> now we're back on GoPro. Okay. Um, Polar. This is KD Tools. 41600. The threaded holes on this balancer are going to be a 8 millimeter by 125. So hopefully these are the right length. Orville says, hey. Hey, Orville. How's it going? <laughs> You're a savior, Brett. Uh, 
I get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what name do you have me under on your phone? Valerie? What do you mean? On Facebook Messenger. Oh, the Mesa Arch Hero? Yep, that's my name. Valerie's the only one that ever called me that. But what was that lady's name? <laughs> I can't remember. Started with an S, I think. I don't remember what her name was. Okay, I got long enough bolts. The two holes that these bolts are going to go in, the threads are all the way at the back of the balancer, but those two holes are what that other service tool drops into to keep the balancer in place. If you live in a rusty area, you may have to run a tap through the threads <laughs> first. Um, let's see here. Drew says, what are we doing? And Kevin is giving you the rock and roll sign. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a hero? No, because you're a rock star. Oh, so okay. many nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> Losing train of thought again. Is that already a channel? The rock star mechanic? If not. <laughs> well, it's going to be now. Way to go. <laughs> now I can't use that name as well so me and valerie went to moab a couple years ago and we went to was that arches national park yeah that was at the arches and we were at the mesa arch and we heard this lady wait a second did i just mess up this lady yelling like we couldn't tell it was a lady but heard someone yelling you could barely hear it too so I put the uh, 400 millimeter lens on the camera. Yeah, I didn't put the cone on the end of the <laughs> polar. That would help. Put 400 millimeter lens on the camera and we could see this tiny person all the way out on this ridge line where you're not supposed to be at all. And we couldn't tell if they were just waving at us or if they were calling for help. Yeah, we couldn't tell if they were saying, hey, or like, help. Hello. <laughs> so eventually, we're like, okay, well, before we go, we should probably just call Park Services. I couldn't get through to Park Services. So like, okay, we're just going to call 911. And on the phone with 911, and they said, oh, yeah, Park Services have been notified, but they are not anywhere close to you guys. So if you can help this lady, please do. missing a wrench can we go take one from your brother um, I can grab another one I'm just curious of where I left it not your bucket under the hood and so we're like, yeah I think we can get over to her safely okay now I'm turning this center bolt and it's going to force the balancer off. Now I haven't lined up any timing marks or anything yet. Um, I'll just run the bolt back in after I get the balancer off and we can line up the mark on the timing gear behind this. And once you get these going, they normally you normally don't have to pr press them all the way off. You can normally uh, just take them a little bit and then wiggle them off the rest of the way. But yeah, we hiked like a mile down this ridge line and found this lady. Little old lady. <laughs> she should not have been out there, but she said that she wanted to get better pictures or something. <laughs> and her friend or partner or someone, whoever came to Moab with her, stayed in the car. <laughs> and at the parking lot, there was no reception. So she couldn't call her friend for help. So she called 911 and she told them that she was really dehydrated so that they would get there faster. Yeah, she told us that. <laughs> she told us this. Okay, balancer's off. We need to take this lower cover off. There is one bolt behind the indicator for the timing marks. There's a bolt on the bottom, but we have to take this bracket loose first to get to that bolt. And this bracket holds the battery cable that goes to the starter. And there's bolt, is it on this side? And there's a bolt over here, and then a bolt that's missing up here. This seems to be a common... Uh, feature of my vehicle is missing bolts. Yep, that other bolt's missing too. So there's normally two bolts in this bracket. You left. Oops, sorry. 
So we find this lady, we haul her all the way back to the parking lot. We get almost to the parking lot and the park ranger meets up with us, which I was on the phone with um, the emergency services and told them that, you know, we had the lady and we could get her safely back to the parking lot. And the park ranger seemed really annoyed. And then she asked the park ranger to take a picture with me and Valerie and this lady. <laughs> No, no, no. First, she asked him to pay, take a picture with just you as she's hitting on Chad. This old lady <laughs> is hitting on Chad in front of me and asks the ranger to take a picture of her and Chad. And then I think she saw that I was a little confused or concerned at this. <laughs> and then she asks for a picture of the three of us. Oh, man. Go on. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, I saved the lady's life. So then Valerie made my name and her phone the Mesa Arch Hero. You don't have to have superpowers to be a hero. You just got to do the right thing. And it was kind of amazing how nobody else around us, like, even cared that this person was yeah. screaming for help. Okay, now we're going to line up the timing marks. There's going to be a mark on each pulley. They'll line up with this little notch in the top of the timing cover. And then there'll be a mark on the balancer that lines up with the oil pump cover as well. <laughs> it's tough to be a hero, Orville. I didn't even get a news interview. <laughs> okay. So that mark in the cam gear lines up with the mark in the timing cover there and there. Um, there may also be marks on this belt, but they might be worn off. Um, so I might just put my own marks just to keep everything lined up. Grab my red ink pen. New channel name, the superhero mechanic. And this is the left okay. cam. And in case you guys are like, no, that's your right side. Um, for the new mechanics out there, it's from the back of the engine or from the driver's seat on what is left and right. So this is going to be the right side of the engine. Because you'll be working on it from the driver's seat? <laughs> exactly. Huh. Well, that's because overseas their left and right's different. That's why they drive on the wrong side of the road. Because so, of the timing belt? <laughs> <laughs> so the mark for the uh, crank is kind of hard to see. It's not normally on the bottom. All so, we see is the butt of your flashlight. So I'm just going, well, you can't see through my flashlight. I'm just going to make my own mark, even though it's not going to line up with the factory mark. So I can get stuff lined back up. Now, if you're putting a new belt on and you put a quality belt on, it's going to have marks on the belt already that are going to line up with the mark on the bottom of this gear and going to line up with the two cam sprockets. Love those T-belts. Gravy. <clears throat> yes, they are quite easy to do, especially in Colorado where we have minimal rust. Um, everything just comes right apart. Only a hero knows. Orville. Only a hero. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna make some noise. Or behind transmission on transverse engines. Cody. Yes. Okay. I wasn't expecting it to be that loud. Sorry for your ears. I tried to turn it down, but I wasn't expecting it to be that loud. Okay, it's best to try and loosen these while the belt's still on, if you can, just so it holds a little more tension on it. <clears throat> um, they do make holding tools that go in here as well, but since I have air tools, I just zap these bolts loose with the belt still on, and I don't have to worry about anything. Um, the <clears throat> tensioner, I used to have a tool, but somebody borrowed it and didn't return it, and I don't know who, that goes between the tensioner pulley and the water pump, so you can collapse the tensioner and repin it. Um, I don't have that option here because I don't have the tool, so I will have to pull the tensioner off before reassembly. But what I normally do is just pop this upper um, idler pulley off 
and detension the belt that way. Um, then we don't have to mess with the uh, pivot point on the tensioner. From the bell housing, Brian. Are you going to be on this camera for a minute? Yeah. Okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, 14 millimeter headed bolt. Are you going to be using any noisy ones? No, we'll be all right. And then we got all of our marks. Pop the belt loose. Sometimes one cam will rotate. That's okay. Non-interference engine. So you shouldn't have to worry about valves hitting pistons. We can take our two cam bolts loose, our cam sprocket bolts loose. Pop both the gears loose. Now keep in mind there's a left and a right. Um, they are stamped left and right. The right one has this extra tooth on it. Be careful with that. That is for the cam sensor. Now we can take this rear timing cover off. Um, there is a tab that goes into this wiring harness. And if you've worked on these before, you know that this plastic is going to fall apart and disintegrate as soon as I start taking it apart. Um, a lot of times I just break it all off and remove it. Um, to prevent any of that plastic accidentally falling into the engine. But I'm just going to take a bunch of these bolts out. They're all 10 millimeter headed, including the bolt that holds the cam sensor in place. Now there's one more bolt that's kind of hidden down here. Take that one loose as well. Now all of these bolts should have a little bit of thread locker on them um, when you reassemble. So if they do, that, to prevent them from coming loose and going through the timing belt. And that plastic just broke like, uh, like glass. And there goes my cam sensor. So it looks like my cam seal was leaking a little bit. We'll replace those seals. Um, when we put the heads back together. I grab my cam sensor. Okay, we're going to leave the water pump in place. Um, no point in changing it since it's so good, even though it has a little bit of belt material on it. We'll just clean that off. Um, and I'll go ahead and try to make a big mess with the coolant right now. I'm just going to take the three bolts that hold the thermostat housing onto the engine. So those are 12 millimeter headed bolts. I really like those sockets. What brand are they? Which one, the long one? Not sure. <laughs> um, that extra long 10 millimeter socket is from Snap-on. And they only make it in a 10 millimeter and an 11 millimeter, I believe. Um, the part number is STMML10. STMML10? Yeah. What, you think they won't understand my slurs? There we go. Looking for my 12 millimeter socket. Oh, there is a drain on the radiator, but it's just not where I was expecting to see it. So we'll just pull this out anyways. Make a mess. <laughs> wow, Snappy must cost you an arm and a leg. Well, if someone else would make a socket like that, that I could rely on, um, I'd probably buy it. There probably is somebody, but they don't come to my shop every week. I do spend a lot of money with Snap-on. Okay, most of that's making it in the pan. Um, we're going to continue working on the top of the engine now. Now, this one wiring harness we're going to be very careful with. This goes to the knock sensors underneath the intake manifold. If you have the money, you're better off just replacing this harness and both knock sensors while you're in here because they are prone to failure after disturbing them. Um, 
And then you have to take all the intake manifold stuff off again to replace them. Question from me. Is that really how it's designed to drain? Or are you taking like a shortcut? Um, that's crazy. <laughs> there's a drain. I just now found it on the bottom of the radiator that would put a smaller stream out. Yeah. But I couldn't find it originally. Oh, I so see. we're just going to dump it a little bit faster. I see. That's crazy. And if I tilt this hose down, we can drain most of the radiator. I will want to drain the rest of the coolant out of the radiator because it smells like burnt head gasket. And I'd I like to put all fresh fluid in there. I could smell burnt smell when I came back into the room. <clears throat> yeah, I can normally tell instantly if a vehicle has a blown head gasket just by smelling the coolant, which I always follow it up with proper testing to verify. Um, but it's just a particular odor. Oh like, yeah, that's bad head gasket. CTA Tools makes a set. I'm not sure of the quality of them, but I might grab a set. I really like the idea of those sockets. Um, the only thing that I wish Snap-on had done differently is the material inside isn't quite big enough to pull those long 10 millimeters with the ball head on them that GM uses. Um, they won't fit down into the socket far enough. So that's my only gripe. Um, they're actually designed for bumper bolts. Um, they have a 10 millimeter and 11 millimeter. They come in a set or individually. And that's the design um, is for Mercedes and some other vehicle, maybe a Lexus on the bumper bolts. Um, there's a coolant temp sensor in the front of the intake right here. You can unplug it at the sensor or at the jumper harness. Dorman, uh, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Dorman makes a great knock sensors. Laughing emojis. Um, <laughs> I'll... I'll pass. Wait, is that a Dorman rep in here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. Not Cody. sponsored yet, but, you know, there's always opportunities. Okay, I'm going to unplug the injector um, harnesses. I took one bolt out right here that normally would hold this harness in place. Um, the plastic was already broken. I'm going to try to keep this all together the best I can, but if it starts falling apart when I get the valve, before I get the valve cover off, I'm just going to rip this all off so I don't have plastic pieces falling in the head. So that one is loose. I'm going to rotate the PCV out of the way. Take these other two bolts loose. These bolts normally don't go back in because the plastic's broken. Like that one there is broken. So something like that can easily go down your intake and ruin your engine. Um, not like a normal driving, but like after the repair. <laughs> Would you be sponsored by Dorman? <laughs> uh, how much they pay? <laughs> <laughs> not that I can be bought, but how much? Is this a Yoda or a Nissan? Looks like Nissan. Uh, Yoda. Toyota 4Runner, 1996. Um, they used this engine from 95 until 2004 in America, I believe. <laughs> okay. Um, the harness in the back, it's clipped to a bracket right, kind of right behind this piece here. And I'm just going to push on the tab to release it and lift it up. Right back to the right hand side, my right, of this heater hose is the coolant temp sensor for the gauge inside. It's a single wire connector. I'm just going to move that hose out of the way, lift this up a little bit. That's all the slack you get. And you have to push the pin or the, the tab to release it. And that comes off. And now we have a little bit of slack in our harness. Uh, release this one here as well so we have some more flexibility. And I just kind of position this around um, and work around it. It's kind of inconvenient, but um, if I actually want to take the harness off the vehicle, I have to take a lot more stuff off. What's that? Nothing. You answered me. Okay. Going to take the heater hose loose 
from the heater control valve. You can do it at the intake manifold as well, um, but it'll give me a little more room if I take it off. Since this has rear heat, there's also a small line here that goes to the rear heater on this T. And hopefully the heater valve doesn't break. <clears throat> oh man, my typing skills are excellent. Um, the other heater hose is attached to a pipe that goes underneath the intake. You can leave that one in place. That pipe stays there for the whole job. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, if you're working on a Tacoma or a vehicle without rear heat, you won't have the two small pipes or the T's. Okay, next we have the fuel rails. We have to, we have to take those loose. I'm trying to remember. It's been a day or two. I think it'd be easier if we take them loose and then we can, uh, get to everything else a little bit easier plus it'll we can clean everything up easier in the hot tank without the injector rail on there so we have a crossover pipe for fuel in the front you only have to undo one side um, they are a banjo bolt with crush washers on each side or ceiling washer make sure you're not you're not smoking um, if you're going to be 100% safe, put some safety glasses on. Grab that washer. And then that way we can separate the two uh, fuel rails. The supply line has a bolt going down into the intake manifold. So I think we have to take the, to make it easier, take the, um, the engine's left hand rail off first. Like you can pull all together here. Yeah, it's just a little harder to get to the lines in the back. Is my only reason for <clears throat> pulling it with or pulling the injector rail first. Then I can lay it off to the side. And I don't like running the injectors through the hot tank. So four bolts on the injectors. If you're not cleaning your parts in a hot tank and you're just gonna put them back on, um, you could leave the rail on there. But since I'll have to remove it eventually, I'm gonna just pull it now. And an N95 mask. To keep from breathing the fumes. Oh. Okay, I'm back. Are we done yet? <laughs> Is that Keith? Corey. Corey? Yeah. It's not even time to play video games yet, Corey. No, we're not done yet. Okay, I'm going to kind of unroute this return hose and take one of these clamps off. Um, the supply and the return hose attach over here on the fender as well. Sometimes the supply line, the nut swells out when you uh, tighten it down and they don't like to release and you end up ruining the line. So I try not to take that loose. We changed our mind, Corey. Blue devil it is. <laughs> Ryan. Um, that's made by Dorman, right? <laughs> uh, Blue devil is a chemical head gasket in a can that some people have good luck with it and some people it ruins their entire cooling system. So I don't know. Thank you guys for doing live videos, Orville. Yeah, no problem. Trying to, trying to educate where we can and keep people entertained where, where they already know this stuff. I mean, we try to be entertaining no matter what, but if we can do both, that's always a plus. Okay, working on the other injector rail. Just wiggling the injectors a little bit to break them loose from the intake manifold. And then now that I have that other rail out of the way, there's one 10 milliliter bolt that's holding a clamp on that fuel line. Pull that off. 
And then there's this little crossover pipe. This goes to the chamber underneath the injector that pulls excess fuel vapor and runs it to the throttle body. So we'll pull that off and now we can lift this other fuel rail out of here. Now this one I'm just gonna lay up on the cowl because I don't wanna take that line loose over on that fender. Put the injectors in a sonic cleaner with the pulser set on constant for 45 minutes. Cleans them up, cleans them up really good, honestly. Corey? Can you bring yours over real quick? Because <laughs> I don't have one of those sonic cleaners. Question? Yeah. Why don't you bungee the harness up out of the way? Um, I normally will, but some I'll have to maneuver it side to side because there's harnesses that go down both sides. So I'll have to reposition it a few times. Polinar Santos says, great job. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Which I suppose we can take a few of the EVAP harnesses loose over here and give us a little more flexibility. Um, there's an EVAP pressure sensor, some aftermarket wiring. I'll have to cut the zip tie on. We have the purge solenoid um, and a switching valve. Like that rings in a can, huh, Chad? LOL. <laughs> yeah, but I was recommending that for the for the bad valves that you had in that. Is that Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you should have tried it on that one. It says that it restores compression. I'm sure it would have sealed that valve right up. So I'll probably pull this all the way to this side um, when I do this head and then we'll flip it over to the other side for the other head. Um, we might be able to undo the one wire on this side that's holding us up. Yeah, it looks like it's just the air compressor or the AC compressor. And now we have a little more flexibility. Um, this harness that comes down the front, I normally don't take it loose, but it's only uh, two connectors. You guys just won't be able to see what I'm doing. There's the oil pressure switch and the crankshaft position sensor. Well, maybe not. They're pretty oil saturated. I may not be able to get them unplugged. Now, wouldn't it make more sense if they like built cars so where like all of the clips and connectors are on the top so that you could just, you know what I mean? Well, they build them to where they can assemble them the fastest on the assembly line. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. Um, cause it's cheaper for them to do it that way. I see. And then they just say good luck to us mechanics. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. I don't know if I can get the oil pressure. You guys can't see at all what I'm doing. Probably making you dizzy flopping around here. I can't get the, uh, release tab on the oil pressure switch we may have to lift the vehicle up for the exhaust so if I can unplug it then then I will but now I'm filthy from trying to get that one connector okay I'm gonna pull the intake manifold bolts out there's going to be a nut and a washer in each corner there's a support bracket right here that ties to the, uh, this metal bracket underneath the intake. And then there's going to be a bunch of 12 millimeter headed bolts. There's two different lengths, depending on if they're the inside or the outside. Find my socket again. Okay, I'm gonna make some noise. for that one that one was a little loose
And no, I don't think the intake gasket was leaking coolant. And that's the only leak, so that loose bolt shouldn't matter because um, I have combustion gases in the coolant. So make sure to grab the washers out of the, the four corners before you lift it off. Otherwise, you'll likely lose them or they'll fall down an intake port. Have you ever done that? Um, and put it back together? No. But I have, I did a starter on a Lexus um, with a V8. Mm -hmm. And two years later, it came in with a misfire and there was a bolt or a nut down one of the ports and they said it was for me doing the starter but i have a hard time believing that it went two years but we took care of it anyways had to pull the cylinder head off um it tore up the catalytic converter had to replace the one bank on the catalytic converter what was it that fell in uh a nut oh Didn't it make noise though? Or can you not hear it over the car? Um, it never made noise for two years until it started running bad and it had a slight tick, ticking noise and a flashing, flashing check engine light. What's a ticking noise sound like? Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> that was a real question for me. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yeah. Okay, my intake gaskets are all shot. The rubber is gone. Um, there's some coolant underneath the intake as well. Um, since we drained out most of it, that's probably not um, from me taking it apart. That was probably leaking coolant previously. Um, I'll leave that one in place because all, all that dirt's going to fall in there. Um, Got a comment. Okay. <clears throat> I had a Prius that had a nut holding an intake valve open. I believe the nut came from a body shop. The customer was lucky. I removed the nut and the engine ran perfectly fine. PJ. Yeah, I was not so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like they got very lucky. But on this, on the Lexus, I was not lucky. And on that Lexus, uh, if you've worked on any of those PJ, um, I believe it was the four liter V8. Um, like an LS 400. It has the little tiny shims that are underneath the, va the valve bucket and you can't change those without pulling the camshaft. So it was very labor intensive to adjust the valves also. Okay, intake manifolds out of the way. We're gonna pull the valve covers. Let's see if this will do it. Now there is a rubber ceiling washer on each one of these bolts. Um, so sometimes the new kits don't come with those. So just don't lose them. Valve adjustments were a PETA. Um, we actually couldn't get um, the shims we needed for like two weeks from Toyota. So I went to the motorcycle shop and they had a shim that was almost identical in diameter um, that I ended up using instead. Making a nice tipsy pile of parts over here <laughs> i'm sure they'll stay <laughs> who's making fun of me now um who's doing it <laughs> no pj says that's pain in the butt Val which it did take me a few seconds to figure it out but I did and I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say that on your channel you thought we were talking about the animal rights activists well yeah because the next Orville some people will do anything for a free cat <laughs> <laughs> okay um, the engine lift bracket that also supports the intake on this side 
Um, if it's an automatic, it has an extra bracket that drops down to hold the kickdown cable. Those are, I believe, 12 millimeter headed bolts. We'll try the 10 just because I have it on here. I lied, they're 10 millimeter head. We'll pull that bracket off first. You need a looks like that color coded drills. So I know which ones are going to be the noisy ones. <laughs> and then it's either a 12 or a 14 millimeter headed bolt that holds that bracket to the cylinder head. We use the same one. Must be a 14. Cause that one did not work. And we may have to do it by hand. I don't know if this will fit down in there. Okay, engine lift bracket is removed. Now, if you're just doing valve cover gaskets, some people leave that attached and they just loosen the bolt. Where's my bolt man? Whoa, slow down. <clears throat> <laughs> slow motion. Make everyone sick. You got a super chat. $5 for that can of Blue Devil next time from Brian. <laughs> Isn't that stuff like 30 bucks? <laughs> you're going to have to buy a real small can. What does it do? Um, it is a chemical sealing agent. Um, it's like really thin like water. And you're supposed to, um, you guys can't see what I'm doing hardly, but I'm getting this back valve cover bolt out. You're supposed to drain all your coolant out, mm -hmm. flush it with water, I think, mm -hmm. um, bypass the heater cores, fill it back up with water and that chemical. You run it until it's, warmed up and then leave it running for like 30 minutes um, and then flush it all out with water again yeah fill it back up with coolant hook up your heater core and hope that it didn't plug up everything and then it's supposed to seal any damaged gaskets huh. chemically yeah but depending on the severity of the leak um, it doesn't always work, and a lot of times it does cause plugging of other components. So is I, don't, I don't recommend it. Is it hard to fix if it does clog stuff? Um, if a lot of times you have to replace the radiator afterwards, which is just a more of an expense, uh -oh. hmm. and it doesn't always seal it up completely. Some people will will patch a vehicle with it so they can get rid of it. <laughs> It doesn't do anything though, but plug the radiator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, valve covers are off. <laughs> I'm gonna pull the power string mounting bolt off. Never used it, by the way, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> one of my coworkers, the one that was here a little bit ago, had tried it in one of his vehicles and it didn't work, but it plugged up the radiator. <laughs> So he, I think he got by for like a month. It was on his son's truck. Um, and then they ended up doing head gaskets on it. And it was on a three liter Toyota pickup. Mechanic in a can. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a fleet account call us, um, a local roto router service asking us to do free diagnostic on their vehicles and they would do the repairs. And we said no. And they like threatened us like, well, you just lost a bunch of business. <laughs> because so-and-so will do it for free. And I'm thinking, what business did we lose if you told me that you're gonna fix it yourself after we diagnose it for free? Doesn't sound like we lost any business. Okay, this is the alternator um, mounting bolt. 
If I can, I'm going to leave the tensioner bolt in place and we'll just lay the alternator off to the side. We don't have to worry about the power cables or anything like that. <clears throat> um, if it gets in our way, then we'll take it all the way off. Unless it's a caddy, then it's standard issue by GM. Corey. <laughs> the blue, blue devil. Hey. Ah, I'll let the alternator hang. Give us a little more room. Yeah, didn't Cadillac have these ceiling tablets that you were supposed to put in the coolant? And then they contained asbestos and some other stuff, so they quit selling them and just expected all of their owners to uh, no longer own a Cadillac <laughs> of that vintage. Something like that. So all of those people that bought those Cadillacs come here for service. <laughs> And complain that, you know, it's going to cost $5,000 to fix the oil leaks on their car that they just bought for $1,000. Diagnose and free should never be in the same sentence, Craig. Absolutely. The pellets? LOL? The pellets? Yeah. What do I call them? Tablets? Yeah, they were a thing you're, you, you add into the vehicle every 30,000 miles because the the aluminum block was so porous that the coolant would leak through it. Okay, what else we got? We have the exhaust, um, transmission dipstick tube, and then we can jump on to disassembling the cylinder heads. I think I can get to most of the exhaust manifold uh, bolts that go to the crossover pipe. From up top, there might be two that I have to get to from the, 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 from underneath the vehicle. <laughs> Chewing on my words a little bit. So a 12 millimeter headed bolt on the power steering, dip, oh, power steering, transmission dipstick tube. Now this dipstick you can remove um, it separates right below the manifold and shouldn't leak any fluid out and comes out like that, gets it out of the way. This one looks like it needs a new O-ring on it anyways because it is leaking. And that gives us a little more access to these back bolts. Those are going to be 14 millimeter headed bolts or nuts on the exhaust crossover pipe that is going to hopefully come right off. Um, let me unplug this igniter, get this harness out of my way. Those of you that have worked on these in the past, it's kind of hit and miss on the, uh, on the Toyota exhaust manifold bolts. Sometimes they come right off and sometimes you just put them on loosely and go to take them off and they um, gold to the bolt and are impossible to take off. I sprayed these with Enforce from BG and that one is coming right off. What's Hopefully that? they all work just like that. What's that? Enforce. Um, it's a penetrating oil from our chemical supplier from BG. That's not it. <laughs> is that what you sprayed? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I sprayed. <laughs> Same can different color in force in force not in force ion activated penetrating oil um, it comes out in a nice foam <laughs> I mean, we use pb blaster as well but the in force works pretty good i hate those manifold bolts cody oh come on you have zero rust in arizona Drew's crossing his fingers for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one seems to be coming free. Hoping that this third one does. Are you going to be on this camera view for a while? Yeah. I'm going to grab the dog some water. Oh, that one's tight. Oh. Okay, it broke loose. Hopefully with a ratcheting wrench. 
which is in my nut and bolt container, they will come right off. So Colorado is like 75 degrees right now. And tomorrow night, we're supposed to get snow. And by Monday, we're supposed to have two or three inches, I believe. Typical Colorado weather. Make sure this other one's gonna come loose. Give that one a break. Okay, that one, they're both coming loose, just slowly. This one freed up a lot better than that other one. Now this crossover pipe dumps out on the driver's side, oh, not the driver, the passenger side. Um, if you are familiar with the older Toyotas, their exhaust runs down the driver's side um, so when I put one of these engines in my uh, Toyota Hilux, I had to cut the crossover pipe apart and reassemble it so that the exhaust would dump out the correct side. I use that stuff. Works well. Smells better than PB. True. Enforce works great. Zep is good too. Nico Heller is asking, where in Colorado are you? Um, we're a couple hours south of Denver. Um, we're in, we're near, near the Royal Gorge. Um, that seems to be the common place that people know. Yeah. Good old Colorado weather. You don't like the weather? Wait five minutes, <laughs> Cody. I wish we would get snow, Craig. This one's almost off, but you know, it's not, you know, finger tight. I can't just spin it off the rest of the way. It's probably uh, going up a little bit. Gullied up? Uh, galding. What's that mean? Um, like it's seized up or it's stick the metal sticking together and then it starts to smash the uh, metal. I'm sure someone else has a better scientific description of it but the two metals try to bond together instead of spinning freely against each other. Oh. Like it wasn't in there directly straight? What's that? Like it wasn't in there directly straight? It was like at an angle or something? Um, well, that can cause it as well. Um, that's called cross-threading, but that normally causes the same thing. Um, but these fasteners on the Toyotas are a, a lock nut and they actually intentionally squeeze them down at the top. I can see that now that I have it off. So it has a little split in it and they're crushed down so they bite in to the bolt hmm. to prevent it from coming loose. And most of the time they come right off but sometimes it just sticks to the metal underneath and it tears the whole thing up hmm. and it's not real fun. Okay, that side came apart relatively easy. Hopefully, the driver's side will come apart like that. Um, I believe there's the one that I'll have to lift the vehicle up to get to, but should be able to get to the other two. Beautiful area, love your content. Nico. Never been to Colorado or Arizona. Last year was my first time traveling out of Cali, Drew. And then was that when you went to Super Saturday? <laughs> Aw, got to meet Chad, but no, t no free t-shirt for me, LOL. <laughs> Who said that? Drew. I thought he got one. What sizes do we have left? Just larges, but the larges fit like a medium. Yeah, the sizes I got were really bad. Uh, <laughs> I think we should do a redo on the t-shirts, but I think we should do it with your the classic logo yeah i like your classic one it's more chad that's because i designed that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah not fiverr <laughs> yeah i didn't pay someone on fiverr to to draw that one for me 
Maybe we'll redo the shirts if we go next year. This year. And I'm definitely not using Hanes t-shirts. You could do uh, underwear. Do underwear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My face on one side and your face on the other. But like on really stretchy ones so they can be one size fits all. <laughs> like spandex? Yeah. Uh, well, Dibs on the front. <laughs> I was thinking one of us on each butt cheek. <laughs> Like kissing though towards each other. <laughs> I like it. Is Oz still in here? He probably gave up. I'm not sure. Oz, are you still in here? Oh, sorry. Durr, you're mic'd up too. <laughs> he, uh, Oz has yoga pants. <laughs> I think your mom wants a pair of the undies. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah, but I wouldn't want her showing them off to people. <laughs> As you know, it's a mom's job to be proud of their son, so she would have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Like Darren did with Steve's face. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah, that almost got kicked. That almost got everybody kicked out of the pub. Yeah, that manager guy, like tapped me on the shoulder because I was sitting closest to him and he's like hey your friend needs to put his pants back on that ain't my friend <laughs> I just met the guy today I'm not gonna go tell him to put his pants back on that's not my place that sounds like a job for the bouncer <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know he picks the tiniest person in the room to go tell the drunk guy to put his pants back on <laughs> No. Now, didn't weren't there multiple pairs of those? Didn't Darren have a pair on as well? I don't know. I wasn't looking. I didn't look at anybody's oh, come on underwear. Now. <laughs> okay. I got one of them. This side's a little tougher than the other side. <laughs> Your mom. But I'm so proud. <laughs> Is she in here? Yeah, that's why I said that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That's what you have to do. <laughs> the practical mechanic leggings. I mean, that's what Oz has. He has yoga pants. Doesn't um, he wear his own yoga pants too? I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't wearing those in New York. He was wearing um, different ones. Okay. Now I'm really winded. Those five bolts I just took out exhausted me <laughs> um let me gather my tools off the vehicle we're gonna lift it up so I can get to the lower bolt you want the main lumix sure um oh man that fancy hair I have today I'm gonna take this off for a minute okay on Saturday during lunch he was showing everyone and slapped his butt <laughs> <laughs> should have seen his face <clears throat> priceless well, he was like a proud mother <laughs> to Steve. I'm going to go wash my hands, get a little bit of the grease off, so I get a fresh start with the, uh, the rest of it. Valerie's going to keep you entertained. You always say that, but I never have anything <laughs> prepared. I do think hats would be kind of cool. Huh? Hats. Yeah, but... Just go like this. I, I would want to <laughs> wear my own hats, but they don't make them big enough. We could special order you one. Or customize it. Custom order like a mascot head? <laughs> and it would fit like a hat? Yeah. What size do you wear? 3X helmet? Um, 2X or 3X in motorcycle helmets. It's got a big head. A big, handsome head, though. It's just more handsomeness to take in. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just do a chaser of coffee with your Red Bull? <laughs> no, it was water. Oh. And I realized I had a coffee here as it well. It looked like you did a, a chug of Red Bull and then a chaser of coffee. <laughs> Sing to us, Val. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on.
Cody's logo would look dope on a trucker style hat. <laughs> now, just hearing you say that and trucker style hat, first thing that popped into my head was the squid Billy with his hat. <laughs> That's a trucker hat. Your mom. That's why he's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's why every time I crash my motorcycle, I land on my head because it's so heavy. <laughs> okay, hopefully we can lift the vehicle without everything falling off or coming unplugged. That would work. A beanie with a bill on it. But even then, a lot of beanies don't fit his head. <laughs> it says one size fits most for a reason, because it doesn't fit me. Did you have to unhook anything to do that? My cameras? Yeah. No, I just have the cords sticking up. Huh. It's a pretty long cord. Okay. I'm just gonna zap this one <laughs> bolt loose. Um, Your tire? <laughs> I flattened the tire so it was easier to work on. No, that one's all derp, derp, derp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's normal. That's how you drive on the trails. <laughs> You get better traction if your tires are flat. <laughs> if they're flat. <laughs> oh, Lord, it's been a bad, a bad day. A bad day. <laughs> a long day. I'm just think. since 5 o'clock tonight. <laughs> After 5 o'clock, it just all went bad. <laughs> <laughs> My hair is so big today <laughs> that the green screen chops off the top of it. Are you on TV? Nah, there's my hair. Yeah, a lot of it gets chopped off. <laughs> on TV? On on screen? I'm on TV. <laughs> yeah, YouTube's probably... Well, someone's probably watching us on TV. Oh, coolant right in my hair. The quality of your camera on OBS is so good. I don't think it translates exactly to YouTube, but man, you should see it on this OBS. It looks really <laughs> good. You're a little blurry, but the car's in focus. Um. What kind of tool is that? huge just a long ratchet and extension do you have another extension you can put on that no but i well i do but i have a longer uh extension as well hmm. it just doesn't fit in my cart so i have to keep it in the wide drawer of in my the, toolbox. In the broom closet yeah <laughs> okay i gotta grab a 14 millimeter wobbly socket is that really what it's called a walk it a, wo <laughs> a wobbly walk it a wobbly crotchet. A crotchet. Mm -hmm. Is a is a crotchet a, a like a ratcheting crotch? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Can you show us? <laughs> You're the one that came up with the word. I didn't come up with a wobbly crotch. <laughs> with a crotchet. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's past Valerie's bedtime. <laughs> I normally head to bed around 6 p.m. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a little noise. I meant a lot of noise. Got oh. one more bolt. I don't know if I can... Turn me down that far? Yeah. Have I even... Th yeah, I've been turning you down. You're number two, right? Yeah. It's... It 
pitched it so loud that my microphone's picking it up. Okay, sorry for your ears, guys. I tried. As I yelled that into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so mean to them. It's okay, they're already deaf now. <laughs> huh? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I pulled the remaining bolt from the crossover pipe out, and then there's a bracket that holds the crossover pipe to the transmission. <laughs> I was getting squished by the car. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Y'all should have seen Chad's face. He was so concerned. <laughs> it's, thought... it's not real, Chad. It's a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't scare me like that. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what's make-believe and what's real anymore. <laughs> it all just blends together. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I forgot to unhook the oil pressure sensor. Back up. <laughs> now that I have more stuff off, I might be able to get to it from up here. I should set up to record me while I do this. That way I have content for my channel too. <laughs> People would have no idea what's happening. <laughs> that, that would make it funnier. <laughs> like it's just me. Cut you and everything else out and it's just me talking. Nobody would know what was happening. Even without you talking, but just like background music and like Japanese subtitles. <laughs> yes. We wouldn't know what it says. <clears throat> they would think it's some kind of horror film. <laughs> because it has me on it? Because you almost got squished by a car and oh. I don't know why. <laughs> Am I switching, switching back to your head cam? Yes. Is that why you put it on? <clears throat> yeah. Luckily, GoPro headgear is large enough for my head, but I think they designed it so it could go over somebody's helmet. It's actually made for your waist, <laughs> but it fits perfectly around his head. Uh -oh. Okay, harness can mostly get out of the way now. Where's my cart? My bungee cord's missing. I don't know if that's gonna go off without you pushing a button. What? Oh, never mind, it did. I didn't know if you could hear it. Your phone vibrating? Uh-uh. It's okay, it was just an alert. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's past your bedtime, Val. <laughs> Val, we gotta cut you off. They're like, it's okay, you don't need to read comments anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wiring harness is mostly out of the way. Our exhaust is semi-loose back there. Um, I shouldn't have to take the manifold off the head in the vehicle. So, before we can pull the heads off, we have to pull the camshafts out. On the camshaft, there is a little pin that holds the gear to prevent losing this pin. Can you see that, Valerie? Yeah. If they are loose, pull them out of the cams now and put them somewhere safe. <laughs> you picked the messiest drawer. <laughs> I didn't put them in the drawer. Oh. I said for my pliers. I see. Because you don't want to lose those because those hold your camshaft sprockets in position. You would think they'd make them like a bright pink or a bright green, like a neon color, so you don't lose them. You would think. <laughs> no, let's make it the exact same color of everything that you've taken off this engine so far. Okay. Whoa. Sorry. I forget. You're so fast. I'm worried about that harness. I'll have to see if I can get a harness tomorrow. Are they closed? Oh, yeah, it's 7 o'clock. <clears throat> um, 
the Toyota dealership should be open and they normally have it in stock. Okay. The camshafts, before we can remove the camshafts, it might be kind of hard to see. Can you see where I'm pointing, Valerie? Yes. There's a split in this gear. One half of the gear is spring loaded to prevent these gears from rattling. So it holds spring tension. Um, you can kind of see it on this gear through the, the oil sludge, but it holds pressure on that face. And then this gear, or the outer portion of this gear, holds tension on the other face, and that just keeps the gear lash from making noise. Well, we have to pin this gear together so that it doesn't twist on us. And there's a couple of holes in here. One of them will go all the way through and it's threaded, but we may have to rotate the camshaft. So I'm gonna put the cam bolts back in the front. Um, alternatively, you can turn the camshaft by this hex portion. Um, I just don't have an open end wrench that size. A crescent wrench will sort of work. Let me see. 17. So watch your fingers because it is. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> Don't stick your finger in the gear because it might bounce. So that one there, that bolt goes all the way through. And the only reason I'm turning this over without the crankshaft attached is this is a non-interference engine. Now we need a six millimeter by 1.0 bolt to go in this hole. Question from me. Yes. What happens if it's an interference engine and you did that? Uh, when you rotate that over, the valves stick out and they smash into the piston. Oh. And then um, it damages a bunch of stuff. Oh, I see. So I'm just grabbing two bolts that I removed from another part of the engine. Just going to thread that in there. And if the bolt is the right length then you should be able to rotate everything around without it hitting this one might be a little long um, but you just want to put that bolt in and it'll keep that gear from springing the opposite direction because then you will misalign the two gears the marks are on the back side i believe on this one actually both of them have marks on the back um, so you don't want to misalign them this one i had to flip the cam 180 degrees to get the bolt in this one is already lined up And then we can remove the camshaft. Clear a spot to put them all. <laughs> um, where's my, my crotchet? <laughs> Got it right here. This is a special edition blacked out snap on crotchet. <laughs> um, I'm going to loosen these up and I don't think there's gonna be any tension on this one. All of the cam lobes are kind of off to the side. Um, so when I was rotating the cam sprocket <coughs> bolt and that camshaft kind of spring loaded into one position, it was going into a position that has less pressure on the lobes. Those are tight. Um, if you do it with pressure on the lobes, then you're more likely to break one of the bearing caps or break one of the bolts while loosening it. And they do not torque this tight when you put them back together. Um, they just seem to release more difficult than, uh, than what the tightening torque is. Now this back bearing cap, we don't need to remove right now, um, but the engine shop's gonna want it off, but it doesn't actually hold the camshaft down, but it holds a plug, rubber plug in the back of the engine to keep it from leaking. So we'll, we'll take the bolts out, but it's not, critical to do that one in sequence with the rest of the camshaft. So we'll go a little. I love the cordless crotchet, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> 
I heard they're really going to be trending in 2020. Especially with everyone staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's on Amazon's essential list of things they can ship. Okay, we need a little pry bar. <coughs> Just going to lift up on the camshaft itself a little bit to pop the bearing caps loose. Now you'll want to keep these in order. They are marked, um, but on the other side, they might be marked backwards. Yeah. So this one says one. That's all it says is one. I2, I3, four, and five. And then this one, since they don't have the big bearing cap on the exhaust, um, they'll be marked E1234, I think. Um, but I'll keep these in order on what side of the engine they came off of. You don't want to mix these up. If you feel like you can't keep them separate, then I would uh, remove the camshaft and put them right back on the engine. But I'm going to set them in order on my bench. What happens if you put them on there wrong? Um, all the machine work done on the inner surface of the bearing cap mm -hmm. is done after they bolt all that stuff together. So if it is not in the same location, the machining may not line up and it could cause engine damage. Oh. <laughs> Gonna have to go visit Chad just to organize and clean up toolboxes. Drew. Is that Jay? Drew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dropped one bolt. I don't like cleaning up my tools. <laughs> That's gonna get replaced. Yeah, go ahead and loosen up this other camshaft. We could just pop that camshaft out now, but since I have the tools out to take the bolts loose, we'll go ahead and take the bolts loose. I'm kind of worried that my chrome socket here is gonna break. These are extremely tight. Oh, I haven't showed you guys my other favorite socket. That is this one from Snap-on. It's a eight millimeter on one side and 10 millimeter on the other. So you just flip it over when you want to switch from a eight millimeter to a 10. Um, since it has an eight millimeter on one side, you don't lose it as often. If it was a, just a 10 millimeter, you'd lose it all the time. Man, I wonder who maintains this truck, because this thing's really dirty inside. If this wasn't my own vehicle, I would assume that they just never changed the oil at all. <laughs> but I don't know what the service history was before I bought it. I'm guessing it wasn't very good since uh, it had a broken timing belt and they obviously didn't do their maintenance there. Okay. Cam bearing caps are off. We can lift the camshaft out. Um, I kind of roll it out. <clears throat> roll it out. Brian loves that socket. Yeah, I have the whole set, but I rarely use any other size except for the 10 millimeter and eight millimeter. Um, it also has a 12 and a, four, 12 and a 14, a 13, 15. Um, and then there's two different length extensions. Okay, um, I'll probably take these shims off after I take the heads off. So you don't want to remove the head and lay it on its side or flip it over because each one of these, um, can you see what I'm looking at? Yeah. Each one of these camshaft followers, let me grab a screwdriver, has a shim on top of it and we want to keep those in the same order. So that is the shim and they're all different thicknesses. 
and that's how you adjust the valves on these. Mm -hmm. So um, ideally, you would clean them all off and label them or lay them out on a bench or on a piece of cardboard where you can keep them in order. I'll wait until we get the heads off and stick them on the bench to remove those. And when we do the reassemble pro reassembly process, um, I'll show you guys my method of adjusting and measuring the valves. Um, I'll go ahead and pull the other camshafts out and then we'll pull both heads off. <clears throat> yep, seen those, nice. Guessing that socket's getting a little worn out. I've got a brand new chrome one. Maybe it'll bite a little better. Can you untuck your chin a little bit? There you go. Perfect. <laughs> this is the uh, the high torque unit from Snap-on, but these bolts are extremely tight, so it doesn't have quite the power to break them loose. We're all focusing on that thing poking us in the eye. <laughs> that thing? Yeah. <laughs> you guys got your safety glasses on, right? My eye. <laughs> I think Chris Fix puts the uh, safety glasses on the camera in every episode, <laughs> reminding people to, to be safe. Now, unfortunately, I believe that the caps on this side don't point towards the front of the vehicle. They actually point to the back of the cylinder head, which is kind of strange, but I think these cylinder heads are interchangeable. Did I not loosen that? I guess I missed that one. Where's my crotchet? That's gonna become a new, a new thing. Just like scan two, you're gonna have a crotchet? Yeah. And I called the machine shop to make sure they were open um, tonight or tomorrow. They were going to be there till 7 o'clock tonight, and then they would be there tomorrow morning. Um, it's just past 7 o'clock our time, and we're not even close. So hopefully he can get these machined for me in the morning um, so we can reassemble it tomorrow or Sunday. And if you guys are, uh, you know, bored and want to hang out with us then um it'll probably take us twice as long to put it back together what it always does you gotta do everything to a torque spec and so do you have to wait for this to come back from the machine shop or is there stuff you can do ahead of time um there's a little bit of cleanup that we could do in the meantime But um, a lot of people, their machine shop might take a couple days to get to the stuff. So they would have to just push the vehicle out 
mm. and work on it later on once the parts come back. And and if it was a customer vehicle and and we were getting parts machined, we'd probably push it out. But since it's the weekend and <clears throat> yeah, yeah, pop this camshaft out maybe. Yep, still looks dirty. But I keep taking more and more off of there. I just need to rotate that a little bit. Because more and more grease keeps landing on me. So you'd think that the vehicle would just get cleaner and cleaner on the inside. <laughs> you need to put more skin down in there. <laughs> Clean more of it. If I stuck my face down there, <laughs> we'd have plenty of space to fill up with dirt. Yeah, but your face wouldn't fit in there. <laughs> We've already <laughs> gone over this. <laughs> okay. Um, we're down to head bolts. There is a hidden head bolt, just like on the older Toyota engines. For some reason, they decided to hide a head bolt. Um, it's in this oily mess up here. And I believe it's a six or an eight millimeter Allen bolt. And then the rest of the head bolts are in line with the uh, cam journal. And I believe they're a 12 point, um, either 12 millimeter or 14 millimeter. So let me grab a couple of tools and we can pull those out. Oil Rona virus. <laughs> <clears throat> you get a longer cord that can reach over there? No, I'm just... I, I don't remember you being able to go that far with your head cam. That's not the right size. <laughs> you have it tucked into your pants? Yes. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? He's tucking it in with his crotchet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I already had the... Well, that's not the right size either. There we go. I already had it on my cart because I took a drive shaft out of a Ford. Um, let's see what size that <laughs> His neck is flexible. <laughs> my what? Your neck is flexible. Why the cord reaches? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. The bolt is a 8 millimeter <laughs> Allen. The other bolts are a 12 millimeter 12 point. Um, to prevent these from rounding out, um, it's a good idea to tap them in. We may have to use a screwdriver and clean the, the bolt out. Yeah, there must be debris down in there or oil sludge. Just tap it in. Tap, 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 tap it in. Yeah, there's uh, quite a bit of oil buildup in the bottom of that. Untuck your neck. You see that? <laughs> really uncomfortable position. Are you just making fun of me? No. <laughs> Keith's comment. Well, you're not going to read it? <clears throat> I don't know if I can read it. <clears throat> hey, Val. Chipped in lick. <laughs> chipped in lick and soup. Son of a gun. I can't do it. Chipped in lick and noop. noop. Chicken noodle soup? Yeah. You know how you fight the Rona virus? Pop tarts. Hmm. <laughs> oh, is that words of wisdom coming from you? Yeah, that's me talking. <laughs> we can't. We're out of pop tarts. I ate them all. The big family size box that comes with four boxes in it. <laughs> you are safe, my friend. Okay. <clears throat> Head bolts. Got the long bar. Break those loose. 
if we're going to uh, do it by the book, we would do it in reverse sequence of the tightening order. <clears throat> um, we'll we'll kind of do it similar. I'm sure that they uh, do it in a star pattern, but oh, they're tight. How long did it take you to collect all of the tools that you have? Like, how long have I been buying tools? Sure. Um, since I started professionally in 06. Hmm. I mean, I had a small craftsman set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got another super chat. For more Pop-Tarts, just not s'mores flavor. S'mores is my favorite flavor. I don't think I liked them when I tried them. It didn't taste like a s'more. No, but it's still good. I forget what flavor I like. Now we're going to have to go to the store and break all the rules. <laughs> I actually told Valerie to take Pop-Tarts off the list because I ate like the big family pack. Whenever he plays video games, whenever there's a pause in the game, he gets up from his computer chair, sprints into the kitchen, grabs a Pop-Tart, <laughs> throws it in the little, what do you call that thing, a toaster, and then runs back to the computer. <laughs> and then on his next break, he runs back into the kitchen, gets the Pop-Tarts, and gets a glass of milk. Yeah, 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 the brown sugar ones. Those are the ones I like. Oh, I don't like those ones. They're the only, well, the I like cherry, and I like the brown sugar ones. No, that's the wrong answer, Craig. <laughs> oh, we almost went in the wrong order. He likes strawberry ones. That's probably my least favorite Pop-Tart. Those are all Chad's. Getting a workout on this one today. I hope I'm still capable of playing video games tonight. <laughs> I might have to power through it. We could uh, teamwork it. I'll be the mouse, you can be the keyboard. <laughs> I thought you meant that you were going to play also. No, I'm scared to play with your friends. They're all too good. I like to play with strangers, and I like to play uh, player versus player. Is that what it's called? Free for all? Yeah, free for all. That way there's no pressure on me to keep anybody alive. And so I don't accidentally kill my own teammates. I don't think there's friendly fire in this one. Oh, well, I'd still feel embarrassed if I was trying to kill my own teammates. <laughs> I mean, they say like... No, no, no. I've seen Keith Perkins kill his team members all the time <laughs> on accident. Huh. I wonder if they're playing a hardcore map. He goes, oh, whoops, you walked in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in the audience watching and I'm like, no, 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 no. You were shooting that person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All the head bolts are loose. And I'm winded. <laughs> you take a break? <laughs> no, we're going to power through this because we got games to play. Uh, I just have a quarter inch to half inch adapter for my little driver. Zip these out the rest of the way. <laughs> you need to play the stabbing game that we played yesterday, lol. Keith. I heard you guys playing. I heard Chad say something about let's all gang up and stab PJ. <laughs> well, PJ was winning. <laughs> What's funny is like the round, a couple rounds before that, like I completely destroyed everybody for some reason. And then I was in like last place. <laughs> I think PJ was just pretending to, to be bad the first round. <laughs> Something like that anyways. You'd have to mute my mic if I played with you guys. Every well, single time I die, I scream, <laughs> and then I start cracking up laughing. I know it's not that funny, but for some reason, I just laugh. Yeah, Valerie had someone tell her to, to shut up, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. It was my very, very first time playing live. <clears throat> Sorry. And with like the internet people <laughs> and this guy was like can you shut up and I tried explaining to him that I'm new what did he want me to do he wanted you to toggle push to talk yeah I don't even know what push to talk oh, no. means and so I'm sitting here trying to explain and apologizing for being so obnoxious 
um, that I don't know what push to talk means. Literally my very first game playing. But he was the only mean one I ran into. Everyone else was pretty nice. I'm clearing some additional space for me to pile more parts on here. Said PJ had the most kills and in the last place in the stabbing game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I spend most of my time playing the Battle Royale, but I, after the update, I'm having a hard time getting a full team. I don't like that one. People just keep bailing out. It's too um, much running around. I'd rather die fast and then come back instead of running around doing nothing and then I get killed and then thrown into that fighting ring where the gulag where I get killed even faster. Yeah. <laughs> you need a magnet for this next part. <clears throat> Hot fudge Sunday, Fortville. Flavor of Pop Tart? I don't know, that's what I'm wondering. Maybe there's lag on his end and he thinks we're still talking about Pop Tarts. No, he just had to think of what his favorite was. Maybe. <laughs> the head bolts have a washer underneath them that's not attached to the bolt. So we have to use a magnet, pull the bolt out, reach back in there with the magnet again to pull the washer out. I believe these are torqued to yield and you're supposed to replace them. Um, I ordered a head gasket set off of Amazon. I don't know what the quality is, but it's my own vehicle, so. Yeah, they gotta be better than what's in there. Um, the kit came with head bolts, so hopefully they're quality. If I have any issues, I'll probably just reuse these ones because it's my own vehicle and I accept the risk. I hate video games, but I hate PowerPoint building more. Keith. <clears throat> Who is that? Keith. DeFazio? Yes. Defazio. Oh, I don't think I ever responded to you, Keith, <laughs> um, about helping with my class. I feel kind of bad now. Uh, <laughs> How long ago was that? That was like two weeks ago. <laughs> Whenever our last live stream was. I tried to get permission for that and I got declined. Um, so I can't even do my training on YouTube with my class, my live stream. Um, I have to use Google Meetings or um, some other conferencing program that the school can monitor. So they have to be able to monitor who's present and who's commenting and all that stuff. So YouTube doesn't work and I can't bring in other guests. It's kind of a bummer, but uh, we're lucky to still be having school at this point, even if it is e-learning. So we'll, we'll try to get my students through this quarter and then get them on to some more advanced stuff next year. Oh, I got the one bolt in the back I forgot to pull out. I feel really bad for your students. Like, what a bum deal <clears throat> taking this class and you can't even do it hands-on. That's a bummer. That's the hard thing is, like this is such a hands-on industry and the class is 50% lab. Um, instead, they have to do lab simulation online. You know, okay. it would be funny, though. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one ground cable here that we have to pull off before we can get this head off. Yes. Is if you, like, made them all get on screen in your little video conferences and you, like, pretend did stuff, like... <laughs> Well, we can't even pre-record our lessons um, for, for our Monday lessons, but we, we have to do them live, which I understand. They don't want, they want the student to have interaction with the teacher, um, but then they cap our time at 25 minutes is recommended. Um, so we actually give them time to go do their assignments and they're not just stuck on the screen. <coughs> in front of their computer for the full day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Comment? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, let me scan the throat. <clears throat> I have that webinar to teach on April 22nd and have no urge to make slides. No worries about the school thing. I just figured I could rouse up the questions and interests. Possibly. 
you're on the main mix. Okay. Um, from what I've seen so far, most students are still trying to get the hang of the e-learning. Um, not all of them are 100% engaged. And I think it's just because it's so foreign of a platform to switch from going to school every day to switching to all e-learning, even if they had one or two classes where they spent most of the time on the computer in the class, it's just a big change to do that sitting in their bedroom where they have all the distractions and <laughs> things that they want to do at home that's easily accessible. Mm -hmm. And they can also open up different browser windows, do whatever they want on their computers. Um, I think it's, it, we're getting through it, um, but it's not going to be the same experience as in class. Some schools just completely said, mm -hmm. we're not going to do e-learning, we're not set up, we're not ready. Um, we decided to do the transition to e-learning as a majority of the schools are doing. It's just going to, uh, it's going to be a learning curve. I think everyone will be happy to get back to normal when that happens. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking forward to. Okay, ground strap is off. Um, my bolts are still going through the exhaust manifold. So I want to pick up on the head and slide it towards me just a little bit to clear these bolts. The uh, hot fudge sundae is a pop tart. In case you were wondering. <laughs> I was. That actually sounds pretty good, Pop-Tart. That's hot fudge Sunday. Okay, that's not coming loose very easily. Late to the show. Hello to everyone. Angel Garcia. Angel Garcia? Yes. I get sidetracked Welcome, welcome. Okay. We are <clears throat> on the final stretch of the show. Main new mix. <laughs> sure. I just got to grab a pry bar. Going to attempt to push back on the crossover pipe and just get it out of my way. Um, I'm just going to leave my pry bar in there. <laughs> so this is going to lift up on the exhaust and push it back. And then hopefully the cylinder head will slide out of here. There we go. That takes up more bench space than I anticipated. So I don't have room for the other cylinder head here. Um, I'll put it on my other bench over there. Some Maybe. manly hands. Is that a comment? Distinct rides by Davey. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think I'm flirting with you? Maybe. <laughs> Never. Been in isolation too long? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I only left a little bit of an oil streak on that one. Okay, looking in there. Now, I don't know how much coolant leaked by pulling the cylinder head. We had the block drained mostly. There's a little bit of coolant in this cylinder and a little bit in this cylinder. Um, might have to pull my camera off and get it closer. <clears throat> Unplugged myself again. Before removing the head gasket, can you, is that clear? What am I supposed to be looking at? This area right here. Go a little closer. Go a little closer? Yes, right there. So I can see this part of the gasket is pushed out. More than likely this portion of the gasket has failed. There's a coolant passage right here. Coolant has probably been entering this cylinder from underneath this gasket. Um, it's possible it was going on top of it, but more than likely it was going on the, underneath the uh, metal and through the composite portion. And I don't see the same thing on this side over here. Um, so this coolant is probably just from the disassembly process. Give me one Whoa. sec. Sorry, I guess I can we <laughs> switch the view so everybody's not going. Whoa. <laughs> Everyone took your drama mean before this, right? <laughs> Those that did are probably sleeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, last step before we send it to. Well, I'll have to pull the exhaust manifold off, but. Um, that won't take too long.
but we want to take these buckets out and keep them in order. So we need our magnet again. Um, it would be best to label them, but as long as you keep them in order or have a spot where you can safely store them. I just use a magnet, pull the whole bucket out. The shim is still in the top of the bucket. You don't have to remove the shim um, for this process. We'll remove the shim later on. Um, we just want to store them right now. So since this is the components for that cylinder head, I'm going to stack this stuff over here. And the other uh, cylinder head, I'll probably just disassemble it on the other bench, just so we don't mix up any components. And I actually have a set of these cylinder heads that are already machined and ready to go, but I accidentally kicked the bucket of shims one time where they were all in order <laughs> and they're all out of order. And then I don't know where the shims are now. I know where the cylinder heads are, but the process of setting up a new cylinder head with all new shims um, is very time consuming. So it's best to just keep all of these in order. And we might have to adjust a few of the valves, but for the majority, we won't have to touch them. Can you write on them? Yeah, you have to clean them all off first. Oh. Get all the oil off and then you can write on them. Mm -hmm. And what I normally would do is start at the front and I just put I for intake, I one, two, three, four, five, six, and then E for exhaust and do the same thing. Hmm. But nobody should touch those, so I'll just leave those be. Um, exhaust manifold, we're gonna stay upright, nope. <clears throat> Where's my screwdriver? I'm just gonna stick a screwdriver through one of the head bolt holes, hold it upright. Now I can zip this uh, heat shield off and the exhaust manifold. <laughs> Cleaner piston appears. Oops, wrong vehicle. <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, this piston is a little bit cleaner. All of them are fairly clean, surprisingly. There's a little bit of ash deposit on this front one. But for the most part, it doesn't seem to use any oil. <clears throat> Just lots of Sorry. paint. Sorry. I'm gonna make some noise. Fair warning. Heat shield is off. Now we need a 14 millimeter to take all of these other bolts off. And we're gonna take this power steering bracket off as well. The engine shop doesn't like it when you send them cylinder heads that still have a bunch of junk bolted onto them. Plus, if you ever send a component to the engine shop with a sensor in it, plan on buying a new sensor because it'll come back broken. And all of these parts are going to go into the, uh, the hot tank to be cleaned up. So the assembly process will be a lot cleaner. <clears throat> I've got a question from your audio engineer. Can you not talk <laughs> while you're drilling? <laughs> yes. Okay. I thought you were faster at adjusting the audio than that. <laughs> and Valerie's just sitting there with the volume knob going up and down. That's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> this cylinder head is, oh, we're not, we're not done yet. We got <laughs> one little bracket on the back that holds the wiring harness and this ground wire. That one's really loud. That's my uh, mic's picking it up too. Even when I go all the way down, it's still bumping up. That little one? Yeah, it bumps up onto the yellow and I have it turned all the way down. Huh. Okay, one more. 
Yeah, that's it. Okay. That cylinder head is stripped, ready to go in the hot tank. I always clean them before I send them to the engine shop, and then I always clean them again when I get them back. Question. Yes. High school voc teacher, right? Yes. That's Angel asking. Yeah, I teach uh, intro to auto shop. So basically, you want to go to Maine? Yeah. So everyone's not getting dizzy? Yes. I'm going to take my headgear off. I'm going to have nice wavy lines on my forehead from uh, <laughs> the rubberized strap on the GoPro. Just put your bangs down and then you can't see Put my see bangs them. down. <laughs> I probably have greasy streaks now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, let me grab a drink here. Okay. Um, intro to Auto Shop. And for that class, I teach two different college courses at the local high school. They are both uh, NASTIF or ASE certified classes. Um, we are accredited by ASE. But I teach ASE 102, which is like very basic shop safety, um, how to identify a vehicle, fluid level checks. <clears throat> we do a roadside flat repair. So we have, we're a Subaru University as well. So we have a bunch of vehicles in our yard. Um, Subarus are the easiest ones to do, but um, I'll go flatten a tire and I'll tell them they can only use the toolkit that's in the vehicle and go over some of the safety stuff that they may see on the side of the road. Unfortunately, after repeated use of the Subaru factory jack, just to lift these WRXs off the ground, we've had two of them fail, like catastrophically. Normally, luckily, it's while lowering the vehicle back down with the tire on it, um, the scissor jack just collapses. So we sent a letter to Subaru <laughs> saying, maybe send us some new jacks or we're going to have to use floor jacks for that assignment. Um, floor jacks aren't realistic for the real world of <laughs> being on the side of the road. You so they better though. learn how to get out of the way fast. That's a life lesson we teach. Oh, that would be funny though. Have them all team lifted out of the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> a floor jack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so basically the intro class is to prepare them for the more advanced classes and also most of my students aren't going to be in the auto industry or become a mechanic. So it's to prepare them for owning a vehicle as well. So we do fluid level check activities. We do an oil change. Actually, depending on where we are in the year, we do several. Um, around Thanksgiving, we do a lot of oil changes because we do uh, oil changes for turkeys. So people bring in a turkey mm. for an oil change. They have to bring their own materials for the oil change as well. Um, but they as a fundraiser we could do a lot of them like two weeks before thanksgiving and we donate all that to loaves and fishes but the uh so that's the ase 102 program and then i do an ase 120 program which is basic electrical so we cover ohm's law series circuit parallel circuit um, how to calculate everything um i struggle a little bit with keeping the interest on how to do calculations on circuits because for one, I rarely have to calculate complex resistance circuits. Um, so I, I teach it anyways, and we try to keep them motivated, but the, the kids aren't interested in that part of it. They like testing electrical stuff. They just don't like doing the math. So we, we try to do as much hands-on training with that as we can, and we have simulator boards and, and snap circuit kits that we do. Um, that's the part where we're going to try and use Electude for some online simulators for the students to use during this uh, e-learning portion of our year. And hopefully they'll get enough out of it there to where when they take the advanced electrical class next year, um, they'll, they'll still do well. A few comments. New cars come with a spare tire. <laughs> that's Craig. Um, I'm sure that was scary the first time, LOL, but that's awesome. You're teaching them the basics, Angel. Um, Brian had a local machine shop that machined a VW head. Tech left cams in. They machined the head with cams in. Valves that were open got shaved. Horrible machine is now closed. Um, 
Yeah, that would be a <laughs> that'd be a bad bad time right there. We do have a local shop that had a Volkswagen 1.8 turbo engine, had the cylinder head machine, put the cams in on the bench, and the third intake valve, the one that sticks out the furthest, uh, when they put that camshaft in on the bench, it bent two of those valves and they put it together and had a misfire. It wasn't the machine shop's fault, it was the shop's fault. That shop has now closed, but. <laughs> uh, there is, our local machine shop is for sale. If somebody wants to buy a engine rebuilding facility with all the machine, the equipment, everything, I don't know what he's asking, but you have to move to Colorado for that. Seriously, if you want to know more information about that, send me an email or a message on Facebook. And I'll get you the information. Um, yeah, the Subaru Jack's failing. Um, those Subarus, we have a like a 2011, a 13, a 15, and maybe a 16 um, WRX and STI. And then we have like a 2014 Subaru Outback Wagon. And they all have spare tires. Um, it's... I don't think that it's a issue that the kids are doing with the jack. It seems like what happens is there's some kind of gears that mesh at the bottom to keep the two halves of the scissor operating at the same angle. And the pivot point, probably from repeated use, flexes a little bit and those gears unlash each other. And then it just like bows and bends. And normally it tips into the vehicle so it doesn't come back at the students and smash their hands or anything. <clears throat> Fire up your engines machine shop. <laughs> Craig. Scotty Kilmer. Oh. Right? Isn't it rev up your engines? Rev up your engines. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if that's a Scotty <laughs> reference or not. Next question. Did you see the Scotty video where he was using the, uh, the ozone generator to sanitize his car? <laughs> He wasn't saying specifically that it kills the uh, COVID-19 virus, but he was kind of recommending that, that it might. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt him. Um, we do have one of those, and we run it in our office at times just to reduce odors and stuff. So we'll probably run it more often just because ozone is supposed to kill all bacteria and, and viruses. It's still not a recommendation. <laughs> it's not the cure. Pop tarts are the cure. Yeah, pop tarts. Preven preventative measures. Cherry pop tarts. Um, yeah, so I think we're at a stopping <laughs> point. Everything's going to go in the hot tank. I'll strip down the other head. In the morning, I'll go to the machine shop and, and drop him off. If he doesn't have anything going on at that moment, then he'll just machine him for me. And my local machine shop, I think he normally charges around $50 per cylinder head. Um, if he has a machine set up for one head and you're doing a second head, then he gives you a discount. So it, he'll probably only charge me 50 bucks for the pair of them. If he even charges me and, uh, we'll be ready to go back together. I haven't opened the box from Amazon with my parts in it. <laughs> so I'm hoping. Why wouldn't you open it before doing this? Be because we only need it when we go back together. I'll make sure that all the stuff's in there before we go back together. Isn't it but going back together tomorrow? Or Sunday, if we have all the parts. <laughs> <laughs> if all else, I'll get a Fell Pro set. It's just that the Fell Pro set was like 400 and some dollars for just the gaskets. Mm. This set off of Amazon was like 25 or something. I think it was like 55 or 60 without the head bolts. And with the head bolts, it was like 80 bucks. So I figure if it does all right, then we're, we're gonna be good to go. Any other questions before I go wash up my arms and then we can go get dinner and then go home and play video games? Are you going to come? Oh, no. My computer's here. <laughs> Just play on the laptop. I'll have to play on the laptop. <clears throat> so now we know Val watches a lot of Scotty Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch a lot of Scotty. Used to. And then he started uploading 19 times a day. I couldn't handle it, all the notifications. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you have any questions so far, let me know. Or if you're watching this after the live stream, um, put them in the comments down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But hopefully we covered everything on the disassembly process. Um, the other side, the other cylinder head, disassembling that is going to be the same as we did on the bench over here. 
the reassembly process is really the critical part of this repair. A lot of people can get them apart. Hopefully you found the hidden bolt on the cylinder heads if you did get it apart <laughs> and uh, struggle going back together or don't do something properly on the way back together. Um, do you have anything else to add? Um, yes, comments from me. Your lighting looks really good today. Oh, we have more overhead lights on. I also it replaced... Is? It just looks really bright. It's nice. Yeah, I recently replaced all of our overhead lights with LED lighting. And I got that light on for the engine <laughs> bay. We got a light on over there. Angel we used to play a lot of Skyrim and Fallout. Muhammad Amir gives you the emoji with glasses. <laughs> and Josh Bush says thank you. Yeah, that's no a problem. Name. Isn't it? I think so. I don't know if you've been in here before or not, Josh. We normally do live diagnostics, but um, when I have to work on my own stuff, <laughs> we often do repair videos. So um, if, you, if you like diagnostic stuff as well, we do that often. Um, not as often as we would like to do it or as the viewers would like us to do it, but it's a fun time. Um, I have the audience tell me what testing to perform. The repair videos, you kind of just got to follow my lead. <laughs> <laughs> I may not do it the way that you do it, but I'm still going to get it done. We're just stuck to your head and have to do what you do. Yeah. Only you guys hopefully are cleaner than I am. And this oil stinks bad. It smells burnt. <laughs> you really have a nice setup. Big props, Chad and Val. Good work. That's Oz. Thank you, Oz. And Joe says he watches. Cool. I don't always remember all the names, especially if Valerie's reading the comments fast to me. <laughs> But we'll, tr we'll try to remember you for next time. Especially when I mispronounce names. It's really <laughs> hard to understand what I'm saying. Hey, um, if there's no other questions, we're going to head out. And uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow or Sunday for the reassembly process. Um, that'll be a long one, so make sure to grab some refreshments beforehand. Not too many beers, though. I was going to say grab some Coronas. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that they're closing up? Corona? Yeah. They're, because nobody's buying them. <laughs> they are shutting down the production plant well, it wasn't temporarily. A, it wasn't a good beer anyway, so no loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently it, they said that it's really hurting their, huh. their sales. <laughs> That's kind of I funny. think that they should be promoting it. <laughs> they, they, they should be doing some. I mean, it's kind of risky having commercials talking about the coronavirus. Yeah, but, I don't think that's a good But I, I think they could do it. They probably have a marketing manager somewhere that's smart enough to come up with a good. Maybe. Yes. Love your videos. Learn a lot. Thanks, <laughs> Muhammad. Angel, thanks for bringing us along. Been a pleasure, ladies and gents. Take care. Yep. Thank you, guys. Um, we will see you later. And hopefully Valerie will end the stream. <laughs> well, I'm going to go to our outro screen oh, okay. in case people want to chat. That'll work. They're not ready to go back to reality yet. Not ready. <laughs> the isolation's been too long. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. Okay. See ya.